Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live event on the county's federal relief funds as well as some other budget updates for you. Um, tonight, you're joined with two people from the Budget and Management Department. My name is Gerard Durkin. I'm the Budget and Management Director. And joining me is Casey Walker, one of our principal analysts in the department. Budgets have typically been thought of as a once a year exercise, but as you will see with some of the items that we'll cover this evening, and especially with all the action coming out of Washington DC, it's really now a year round event. And so we thought we'd take the chance as we approach our fiscal year end on June 30th to reach out to the public in a more transparent manner about some of the items that will be going before our Board of Supervisors next week. We are fully cognizant of the fact that not everyone's hobby is to go through government documents like Casey and I. So we thought we'd take this avenue as a chance similar to the budget hearings that we had in April through Facebook Live to update you on some of the things, as I say, that are going before our board. So one of the first topic um, will appear on your screen in a second is a revised uh, Dominion Energy Memorandum of Understanding in the amount of $68 million that will be coming in fiscal year 2021. And this is to appropriate those dollars for projects to maintain or improve county facilities impacted by the removal of coal ash from storage ponds. Some of the projects included in this amount are a new bridge access to Henricus Park for $57.8 million, as well as the Coyote Drive um, new access and pedestrian bridge of $4.9 million. Secondly is a regional effort, the Central Virginia Transportation Authority, or as we all call it here, CVTA. Um, this is a new thing that is being created by the General Assembly where um, ex excess funds from sales taxes and wholesale fuel taxes go to regional transportation efforts, but there is also a local component. The numbers that you see before you, the 20.7 are what we are planning for projects in fiscal year 21, with 20.6 in fiscal year 2022. And this is to set up the county's portion of those dollars that are flowing through to our coffers. Um, some of the projects that have been identified by our transportation department include the Nash Road extension at $5 million, the Woolridge Road extension at $3.9 million, and the Powhite Parkway extension of $3.3 million. And finally, on the school side, we have the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Act, or ESSER. This is one of the federal stimulus programs that are flowing directly to the school system. And that for fiscal year 21 is $22.9 million. The school board, and with conjunction with the board of supervisors, has identified the plans for those uses of funds, including a summer school over two years costing $10 million, online learning and digital curriculums at $2 million, um, PPE and school safety touches equipment, um, especially with all the COVID-related stuff, at $5.5 million, air quality maintenance at $1 million, and $2 million for technology upgrades. And the public, um, as well as tonight, will have a chance to come before the Board of Supervisors if they so wish next Wednesday to raise any points with these topics. But the main focus for tonight, aside from these, is really the American Rescue Plan Act. I'm sure you've heard the $1.9 trillion bill coming out um, of Washington, D.C. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to what we call our CARES R, Casey, to walk through um, the ARPA funds. So the American Rescue Plan Act funds, or the ARPA, is um, going to distribute $68.4 million to the county. $34.2 million of that is going to hit in FY21, and then the second piece is going to follow most likely in FY22. And so the county is holding a public hearing um, on the 23rd to accept the full $68.4 million. And this public hearing is planned to continue into the July meeting. This is gonna allow for the public to provide feedback, as well as give us time to await final guidance from the federal government on what eligible uses of the funds may exist. We're still providing feedback to the federal government through our national organizations as well, who um, liaise on behalf of local governments. And that may be able to shape the guidance as well. And what this means for us is that this will allow us um, to wait until the most concrete guidance is provided to set our final plan in July. With that said, we are considering a few targeted uses of these funds, including workplace modifications that accommodate the new realities of telework, as well as any ongoing COVID and safety modifications, cybersecurity initiatives and additional support for telework environment. Um, cybersecurity is in the news a lot lately, and the federal government gave us guidance saying that this was specifically eligible, so that's something we are going to consider with these funds. 
Water and sewer infrastructure improvements are also eligible and something we are interested in looking into, as well as payroll that we may not have already claimed through CARES and um, reinvesting revenue loss that may have materialized um, into PAYGO or other uh, uses of funds. We're planning to approach these funds with the same philosophy that we did with CARES, and we will prioritize one-time investment over anything that will burden the county with ongoing recurring expenses to support new initiatives. So this plan is gonna be brought to the board in July, but in the meantime, we appreciate any feedback from um, the public. And with that, I think we'll turn over to questions um, that we've received from Facebook. So far, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, we'll give it just a couple minutes to see if anything um, comes through after we've provided some initial information. And one of the things that we'll do is, you know, as, as Casey referenced with these plans still being in flux, is that when we get more definitive guidelines from the federal government, we'll certainly be back before the board and even maybe do future Facebook Live events to kind of tell the story of what we're planning to do with the um, ARPA funds once the puns have been identified. I'm seeing some feedback, but not any questions on the Facebook um, questions. So um, community members can continue to submit feedback through Blueprint Chesterfield, as well as Facebook and any other social media. Yep, and we'll be having a work session on these topics, as I say, next Wednesday, um, the afternoon work session of the Board of Supervisors, as well as the public hearing uh, that evening starting at 6 o'clock. And so with that, we would like to thank you for your time.